Yes, my name is Bench and welcome back to our Rail Tutorial Series. In the last video we were talking about all our new logic blocks, you can check it out here. But for this episode it's all things this rotary block, our Rail Rotator. This is the counterclockwise one, we're still in the dev build so I don't know why the arrow is pointing the other way but let's ignore that. So let's see all the different things that we can do with this one block, it's very powerful for rotational movement. So at the moment we've just got it pointed down. And what we'll do is we'll grab our rail uh, or our entity and we'll go and we'll dock it. And you can even see right off the bat, no matter which way I'm pointing, it's going to orientate myself the way that the block was pointing on the bottom of our ship. As you can see here, if I face there, arrow points this way. And it's going to align these two, but then it rotates me once. Oh, it's not rotating me now. What's going on? Maybe it's from a height, who knows. But that's what's happening at the moment anyway. So it does rotate and it defaults to 90, 90 degrees. Now, if we go down here, first thing we'll show you is how to get constant motion. So say we want to have like a, a radar dish spinning or something, we can do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our activation module. I'm going to drop it down here so we can grab it. And we're going to put it directly next to our rotator block that we want to rotate, we're going to hit C on it, and we're going to hit V on it. So it does need to be right next to it, otherwise if it's apart, we'll end up undocking again. Um, and then we'll hit on. And what this is going to do, is it's going to send a high signal each time that it rotates around, um, causing it to want to rotate again. So you can see we've now got permanent rotary motion, and we can't even switch it off. It'll just go, no, I want to keep going, because each time we switch it off, it goes... All right, I've lined these two edges up. It's the rail detection. Uh, we can see that here with the button. You're actually getting quite a quick pulse there because we're rotating very quickly, which is really cool. And you can imagine if we staggered the rotation of this, we could get some really cool randomized little pulses coming out of everything. But you can see that's the constant trigger for it. If we switch that off, it'll stop. And if we hook it up with just a button, you'll see that it kind of stops and kind of starts again. But you can see that interaction is still happening the same way. Um, so that is detection with here. Now, let's actually control the spin. For this, I'm going to use an AND controller because it's not going to actually trigger itself the way the other ones do. So you can see we can do that. Now, if I put a button into that, then I can push the button and actually control when it spins. And you can see we'll still get the detection each time it gets that 40, uh, about 90 degrees and lines up. Which is great, but what if I didn't want to move 90 degrees? Well, we have a way to be able to control angle. So what we'll do is we'll chuck down a whole heap of these, and we'll just start with one. So if we take our uh, rail, now we're taking the rail rotator, and connecting it to a module here. Now it will say at the top right because dev build cannot connect structure, but we can. Now if I hit the pulse, you'll see it's not moving. That's because this is off. So we're saying it's actually going to move in zero degrees. If I switch it on, we have one now connected, and we're going to rotate in 45 degrees. You can see even when we reach that 45 degrees, we're getting a detection because we're actually reaching the end of our rotation. So for rotational blocks, it's not when the, the side of it lines up, it's merely we've reached the end of a rotary movement that we're doing with this block. Now if I grab two, connected, you'll see it's still 45. If I connect it again, it now becomes 90. And so adding an additional activation module here in this sequence will actually let us get control and add in 45 degree increments. So you can imagine now that if I add three, then it will rotate in that increment. If I grab four, it'll do 180. If I grabbed six, I'll do 270. And if I grab it at 8, I could do a full 360. Now, some people are saying, hey, that's a pretty complicated. Why can't we just set the angle? 
by hitting R on the rail rotator. Yes, you could, or we could set it up that way, but then you wouldn't be able to have a dynamic way to actually set your rotaries on the fly. So say I wanted to turn it off, I could pause it there if I wanted to activate it again. So I have a lot of control, and for things like robotics, you want to be able to control on the fly how much rotation something has. Say if you had a swinging arm and you wanted to move forward a bit, and then swing all the way back, that's two different angles. And so with this setup, you'd be able to do that. So it is quite a few blocks, but I mean, if you're wanting to do just small 45 degree motion, you could easily do that with just this setup here. You don't even need this block. Alright, so that's great, controlling the angle. Now, how do we change between the two rotary blocks? Well, similar to how we did the um, linear blocks, we can do the same way. So we'll grab two buttons. We'll grab one, which is the clockwise, or I think that's the counterclockwise. We'll grab one, which is the clockwise, and again, putting it directly next to our logic block and then connecting it up to the block we want to change. Now, one thing to note is that similar to when we first dock our thing directly to our actual block, it rotated the same deal when we change. So when we change the block, it's going to change 45 degrees again. And you can see I'm just changing it to the same block and it gets a 45 degree motion. So you don't even need the button to be able to control it. Now, you can imagine in a setup like this, making sure it's rotating properly or to prevent that from happening when we're docking stuff because if we got this all set up all our logic's all set up and then you go to dock your ship and it ends up rotating 45 degrees you don't want that so we can turn our activation module off temporarily when we're plugging everything in once we're ready to actually use it with our logic we can switch that on again and be able to control it from there so that's all well and good, but how do we actually maybe get it toggling between the two? Well, we've got a couple of different ways we can do that. If we jump in here and grab our flip-flop block, which is this one here, and using the same setup that we did in the last video, we can have a flip-flop going into a knot, and we can have one of those going to each of these. So one like that and one like that. And then we're on a button that we have, we'll put it all the way over here, and we can connect that into our flip-flop. So we can then push the button, and you can see our flip-flop toggles, and then we have control over it with just the one button and toggle between the two, which is really good, and exactly what we want control-wise. So it's really easy to set up to be able to have that sort of door, and you can imagine that's a door or something, if we wanted it to spin quite a bit, imagine you're doing something like the um, like how Imperial Shuttle, you can check out that video here. This is pretty much the way to do the wings, so they'll be up in one way, and when we push it, you can see it toggles, alright, they're down, push it again, rotate back the other way. Really simple to set up, and you can imagine that um, it's can get some really cool movement out of it. One thing to note is that if it gets jammed or something and you need to kind of reset it, it's kind of rotated the other way and you go, oh, hang on, I want it to start there and rotate this way. You can switch these off, toggle it, switch these on again, and then toggle again, and there we go. We've kind of changed it around. And if we need to change small little increments, Again, we can change a small little increment and then switch it back on. So we've got a lot of control over bug fixing. If we need to rotate it again, we can even hit the end block to line things up. So there's a lot of control in order to get rotary motion doing exactly what we want to do, which is really cool. The other thing we can do is also change these into linear blocks or the rail basics to get some even more crazy movement. But that's rail, um, that's rails at the moment. It is really cool to do. And in the next video, we'll look at turrets.